Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. I'm representing all the gangsters all across the world. Still hitting them corners and them lolos, girl. Taking my time to perfect the beats, and I still got a love for the streets. It's the DRE. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Alphabetti Spaghetti, and this time it is the letter or. Now, the first question for my no. esteemed. <laughs> Sorry, the first, is, the first thing is the first thing is the first thing is is that I've been spelling your name wrong all this time. What? D R E. What's that all about? Oh, it's the D R E. <laughs> well, what I want, to, I was. Um, I was big into rapping as a teenager. <laughs> you didn't practice, clearly. Or you... That's that from comes... Matthew Saeed's practice. I mean, or I mean, all of the people who are into... No, practice. no, no. I've got loads. I actually just try and find some lyrics that were clean and acceptable. As a What about trying point. to find a, a beat and a, a key? Still, if you actually listen to what I said, I said, I'm still taking my time to perfect the beats and I still got a love for the street. It's the D-O-E. So what I wanted um, to do was start with a, Yeah, Dr. Dre, you're such an old white Tory, you wouldn't even know who Dr. Dre <laughs> is. Oh, doc, Dr. D-R-E, Dr. Dre, I mean, doctor. if you said Dr. Equi Ratings, D-R-E, no, like, I just, just about get away with it. Most people just know me as the doc. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to get started. It was great. I knew that I did know the reference. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, starting point then, um, I have got Sam Watson, I've got Spike Milligan, and I have got uh, our normal host and our alphabetic guest, Nicole Brown. A little word of warning before we start the show, the same alphabetic warning that we have to do every time. If this is the first time you've ever tuned into the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, this is not a good place to start, and I would recommend stopping now and going back and listening to some of the other shows. Most of the shows are much better than this. If, um, but you know, if you want to, if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay as well. The first question is, or, um, so we've got Alphabetti. I'm just going to deal with it. That's the way I say it. We're going to have to get that out of the way early. I can't change that now. That's how I say it. Or as for rapping, I was big into the rapping as a child, uh, and teenager, not so much probably as my life has gone on but i still really i still would listen to that type of music um that genre question starting with sam were you ever into rap music (laughs) no uh the closest i would get to rapping would be on christmas eve and and that would be with a w so no i didn't i suppose i probably had a fair idea where that was going spike um it, it, I can't say it'd be one of my strengths, I have to say. But would you, um, would, you, would you like to listen to it, even if you're not as good with the beats and the rhymes as me? Well, there's a lot to live up to there. Um, well, you know, when I, in younger days, before I got too old, I mean, I listened to Radio 1 and had my days of listening to, to what would crop up on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What a, I actually, I arrive at Yards now and Radio 1 is on and I'm like, oh, these guys are too young for me. What, what radio station do you listen to, Spike? So I listen to Radio X in the morning <laughs> and okay. then I listen to podcasts in the day. I thought you were going to say like smooth radio or something. Well, that's very funny. So, so Nicole, I am a very smooth person. Um, no, I, I okay. think for a very short period of time, I tried listening to Radio Two, and then got, and then strongly felt that I was not old enough for Radio Two, but was too old for Radio One. And then, yeah, I had to find my own way. Hmm. What do you, I, Nicole? What about yourself? I, Sorry, sorry, am I not allowed to ask a question? Yeah, Dee's face listeners is quite frankly horrified that Alphabeti has been hijacked. Well, look, it's a, it is an or question, that radio station. It's just, it doesn't flow with, because what should happen next is we just clear off this first part, which is rap. And I mean, 
No, let's look. Let's just just move the conversation as if I'm not a dictator. So I suppose we'll just take it uh, from Spike's point of view. What radio station do you listen to, Nicole? <laughs> um, to be honest, I listen very little to radio these days because uh, usually I am if I'm if I'm in the house working, then I'm usually editing a podcast. That tends to take up a large proportion of of my listening space. Um, or there is children's TV which at the moment it seems to be an obsession with Paw Patrol. And if I do happen to get the radio on, then I would probably, I'm a bit partial to something like Heart. Or in like October, I turn I find that one random Christmas radio station and just mm. rock out of Christmas tunes for about three months to get Big me in the fan, mood. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy Christmas FM. I, I like when mm. that comes on. Mm. Uh, but no, I, I suppose... not in answer to the original question about rapping, Absolutely I, I mean, not. I was going to skip over you. You're the yeah. probably, you're the least straight out of Compton person that I've ever met. <laughs> um, okay, there was I a mean, rap let's... on the eventing podcast once. There yes, was. There he was our West super fan from the west coast of Ireland. Yeah, we should bring him back. Do you know what? Should, because because I'm a I'm a big fan of making work for myself. I think we're going to no, play no. that rap right now. No, no. Not in alphabetic spaghetti. No way. Not 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 happening. No. Spoil sport. Um, people can find it. I mean, it was a time. It was a God. It was an, a bygone era of the eventing podcast, wasn't it? We were really. We were Loose. completely. Di- we were. <laughs> that is, I'd say that's, that's the most accurate description. <laughs> we were very loose. Um, it was the early days. As opposed to now. <laughs> When it's on know. alphabetty, where we're just structuredly unstructured. I but anyway, a, as I you know, I love out, alphabetty. Um, so it's... I, I sent up a bat signal today because I think it's a momentous day. The or for release is happening. The Brits one step ahead of the Irish, but you are you have a roadmap and you are on the way to being. I mean, to some kind of, I see nightclubs are included on the 21st of June, which looks like um, a wonderful step. So, I mean, you're all going to be out and free and uh, happy again soon. First question then, or for release, uh, where, Spike, is the first place that you would go in the kind of post-COVID, uh, the post-COVID world? What are you doing? Oh, it's a good question, isn't it? See, it's a bit weird because, like, for a lot of well for most of this whole covid thing i've sort of felt that you know my work has kind of carried on and it's sort of a matter of you know work seems to have carried on and fun seems to have gone so i just i can't wait to just get back to the pub i have to say just get back Mm. to the pub catch up with some mates catch up with a local see what's going on just sit at a bar and just chat what's the first pint you're ordering Oh, I think it would probably be a pint of, probably either a pint of Peroni or a pint of Moretti. Mm. You've got to go to the pub I, and have a beer. Although that sounds no. like lager, granted. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that would be it. Be good. What, uh, would you have a, would you be a crisp man, a peanut man, or would you be looking for crisps, or would you be looking for chips or something? So I think I would be all over any, you know, like I'm not, I'm not that fussy. But given the choice, I would be, I'd be all over pork scratchings. Like, <laughs> like we don't have them really. That's an English thing. Is it? They're very good in yeah. fairness. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Um, they don't do it for me. They, they should, um, but they don't. I don't know why. I, I just don't understand anyone who doesn't like pork scratchings. I wouldn't and, go that far. I wouldn't go that far. And then, uh, yeah, I'd also be partial to a scampi fry. Yeah, excellent choice. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Nicole, um, this, uh, there's a ban on this. I think it was actually Sari, um, Sari Weaving, who I saw on Flick tonight just as I was logging in to find some or questions, has had an incredible start to 2021 and has, you know, cut alcohol out and has become ultra fit uh, on top of her incredible knowledge of eventing and her kind of trivia prowess. I think it was her who put this question to us. And Nicole, she specifically said, don't say Devon. Oh, damn um, it. Yeah, don't say anything okay. like, I just want to sit in my boot and drink tea uh, in Devon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, blissful. 
in a slightly more exciting version. What's the what's the most exciting thing, Nicole, you can think of post uh, in this post COVID world now that you're that you're embarking into very soon? I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to go um, to the pub and go all go out for dinner, uh, shopping like proper clothes shopping, trying on clothes. Um, I do like shopping without a toddler in tow. Um, mm. Usually I go with my mother-in-law who is brilliant at shopping. And if she tells me to buy something, then it's fine because she told me to do it. So it's fine. Um, but I actually would say being back at an event with friends and seeing people in person rather than on a screen and actually seeing a horse in a fle- in the flesh doing like eventing stuff and having a microphone in hand and talking to actual people, that would be it for me. That buzz of a real life event. Okay, I'm going to, I mean, firstly, you're going to have that very soon. But secondly, you can pick the event and the test that you're commentating on. Let's call it a cross country round. So you can pick the test and the cross country round. And you can pick, uh, you can pick the drink that you have in hand. Okay. And you, and you can pick one friend. What, to be with me? Yeah, that's what you've got. Okay. I would say that it is it'd be a toss-up between badminton and Tokyo. I'm going to go to Tokyo <laughs> because it's the Olympics. Right. Um, you didn't Big say this had to be real. Yeah. I thought, I was thinking more like Burgeon, but you've gone for Tokyo. Oh, um, well, you go. You say an event. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm in Tokyo. Coming yeah. down the centre line is, I'm going to say... Oh, who could it be? I was going to go Ingrid Klimka. That's going to be a pretty exciting test. So I'm going to say Ingrid is coming down the centre line. You are my co-commentator, D. Oh, I'll take that. And so we commentate on Ingrid. I'm going to have a glass of champagne because we're at the Mm. Olympics. Not while we're commentating, though, because I do not approve of that sort of behaviour. And then cross-country performance, I'm going to say... Tom McEwen Toledo de Cursa going cross country at the Olympics. Yeah, there we go. Is that were that were they all the questions? Yeah, that's fine. I think that's all very positive. It's all I suppose it's it's very much on brand, I would say, for you. Um, Yeah, just to make it more on brand, uh, sorry Sam, uh, we can commentate on your show jumping around as you lead the Irish team to another team silver. Which is always entertaining. You know, you just don't know how that's gonna work out. We're not going for silver. And board of silver it's about time yeah. for gold when when i have to write expletives <laughs> in the chat column <laughs> on the side it's not Sorry about it's, that. you've not redeemed yourself no you go on you have to tokyo and watch ingrid again at another <laughs> championships doing another stellar test i mean who imagine if me i let the dressage imagine if i let the dressage think of the yeah. shock that would be something wouldn't it yeah that would be something and anyway, it's way more it's way more fun we'd watching be. the random Russian with a massive tash doing dressage. Like that, that's much more entertaining, isn't it? Yeah. Or I don't know, a Belarusian going cross country. You know, no, like because it, come on, that's much more entertaining. Like, but we're looking at a horse that could go into the lead at the Olympic Games. Like Julia, yeah, you can see that at Wiesbaden or Lemulin or yeah. Arkin or whatever. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Ooh, Mistake free test. When Yashi went into the lead at London, that was that was a big moment. Yeah. It was big for the sport. Like Yashi obviously mm. a top class rider and was a top class rider at the time as well. He wasn't he wasn't new on the scene really. Like he was definitely Japan's number one. But to just go and lay it down, bang, like uh, London was seriously competitive. Five per nation, you had Andrew Nicholson there and Toddy and all that lot. You had all your Aussies, all your Germans, all your Brits. William was there and he just goes, boom. Great. Serious question for a minute. I know that you, um, you know, that was a championships that I suppose you could have been at, should have been at, weren't at. Uh, it was also kind of probably around the time. Was that around the time either you got married? It was, well, it was just, married at the just, end of that year. Got married in the yeah. end of that year. Yeah, so yeah, we, I, yeah, we often talk about 2012 as being a kind of a, a year of ups and downs for you. Turning Where, point. And it was a bit of a turning point. Where and how did you watch London? And did you watch it with any... Were you able to enjoy it at any level? Or, you know, what's your memory of that time? 
Um, I watched it in West Hitherley in the little yard I was renting. It was small. It was, yeah, it was it was small. Myself and Sparks, we were there, and it was so close. I mean, we were an hour and a half from London, like from where the Olympics was taking place. Mm. So you you were definitely you know you were it was a it was a shame not to be there for sure. But you kind of got over it by then because the selection was weeks before and I'd not mm-hmm. run well yeah you know I still I enjoyed it like I enjoyed the sport like watching I mean Rio you were with me when Rio played out mm-hmm. I mean I I was I was sweating like I was well, that you had a grand uh, on the Germans <laughs> we were both sweating okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we bet quite a lot of money well with a saver on the French it was so yeah. exciting so no I get I you know, I can't wait for Tokyo, What you know, whatever way. I mean, it's it's actually different. I actually, well, like when I'm at the championship, I go into no emotion, Sam. So I don't, that's yeah. that's different. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't watch other people so much. I mean, unless I'm looking for information or whatever, but they're just horses cantering around. I'm not really watching the leaderboard that much or anything like that. Whereas when I'm, I think in London, I was pretty excited. Um. Post COVID, I presume your main excitement is uh, two children returning to school. Post, oh, that's uh, hopefully any, in a week. Yeah, any other post COVID dreams? Post COVID world dreams. I mean, we're obviously further behind these two here in terms of our rollout. We're we're taking it at a leisurely Irish pace. This vaccination business. Um, it's it, it's been a complete changer. Like, I mean, I've realised just how. I think in a in a great in on one sense I've realized how boring I am you know to other people but I think in a way from a family point of view like I just do I mean I'm obviously very lucky I suppose to just love what's under my own roof and that but I didn't realize that before because you're too busy just going through the motions it came exactly at the right time like the boys are 6 and 7 they were 5 and 6 when covid started and I have actually got to know them properly and spend time with them and whereas we just went from one weekend to the next and mum was minding them every weekend and we were just getting through the you know like my perspective has completely changed um so that's been good i i would just go out for dinner as well like i mean i wouldn't be we without like our son thing. holidays yeah without them for god oh god yeah um will you be going back on one of your big all-inclusive <sighs> son holidays it's weird isn't it like i mean that's that's where i think things have changed like i'm not in a rush to get on a plane i don't know yeah. it's all it's all a bit but no i that no i that's that's the one that's the luxury i i think when i'm lying on the beach again doing nothing drinking cocktails <laughs> buying my wife what she thinks are not alcoholic cocktails but they're actually <laughs> alcoholic i'm watching her get confused when she stands up from reading her book um that is one of the great spark stories. I think we've told it on the pod previously, but the, what were they called again? The Mango Tangos. Mango Tangos. Yeah. Really we, yeah, we all, we all ordered it. We were all ordering beers at like nine o'clock in the morning on our last morning. And they're saying, no, afraid the bar is not up until 10 and sparks because I'll just have a Mango Tango, please. And they're like, no, no alcohol. <laughs> Didn't realize. She had been great. slowly sipping away for three or four days at that point. Think, yeah, thinking she's getting heat stroke. <laughs> I mean, there's not. It is kind of a form of abuse that I, I expect. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> okay, this is quite an interesting one. I must check this. Um, I'm gonna have to confirm who said this in. I did like it. Uh, the best. I think it might have been Eilish. No, actually, I know who it was. It was Nadine Haley Brown. She's all. She's a friend of the show. Um, best rice based dish and then she correctly pointed out that arancini is the answer however i'm sure some of you lot will have more basic answers than arancini spike arancini is a good answer arancini is a good answer i wouldn't say it's the answer though (laughs) you're wrong tell me some rice based dish that's better than a kind of a fried risotto ball with some okay. kind of panko bread crumbs wrapped around I'll take it. that and I'll raise you a paella <laughs> oh, you you have raised the roof yes you're probably right because <laughs> well a paella is amazing because yeah. 
It's got loads of amazing seafood and it's got a few veggies in there, whatever. And then if it's done really nicely, it's got that like crispy bottom. What's that called? The soccerat. This is me doing knowledge now. Knowledge, knowledge. Um, what is that? Soccerat. That's like the crispy bottom. So it's not like it's not supposed to be like wet and horrible, like we all think mm. of paella should be. It's supposed to like have a really crispy base. Okay. Where the rice is just sort of fried off a little bit, and yeah, paella is amazing. And I and I remember in in the eventing world uh janelle is amazing at making paella the prices have a pa- massive paella dish that, that comes out the side of the lorry or it used to mm. we've got posh lorry, posh lorry now and i remember a couple of lovely evenings sat uh eating paella by the prices lorry so yeah there you are you can have your own genie balls i'll have a paella uh, it's a f- it's very strong, very strong answer. I'll give you that. Um, Nicole Brown, where are you? You're more of a potatoes girl? Um, no, I like rice. I mean, <laughs> I like it as much as the next person likes rice. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't wax lyrical yeah, about it. It's um, basic enough on its own. I agree yeah, I, does a curry with rice count? Absolutely. No. It's not a rice dish. That's just it's a it's a an addition. It's well, a, rice dishes are quite limited. I would say when could, I was at if Virgin, you if you said if you said you wanted a biryani, which would be a rice based curry dish, then I think you'd, that would be allowed. So obnoxious, isn't he? Yeah. If you said you wanted if you'd a biryani, said biryani, biryani <laughs> I'd have given it to you. <laughs> um, no, no, I no. would say at Birdham last year. I bearing in mind, so set the scene. It's August. I have not left home in months. And head up to Bergen, which was great excitement. Um, and basically have for, for dinner at this little place that we were staying, a, I, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was like a smoked haddock and egg risotto or something. Um, but that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. So a good risotto, but if you're mm. not going to let me have anything else. No, 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 no. We will. I would have taken curry. I think it's. I think you're. Yeah, I would say curry. Curry would. Curry would be up there. Sam, you're a great man for an for an Uncle Ben's already cooked rice, Mexican rice that you can can tip in on top. I probably did that in the lorry. I probably would have done that back in like back, but early, early days. Then I then what I would have done when I was, yeah, like ten years ago, what I would have done was I'd have done my stir fry vegetables and chicken or whatever and then I'd have put all that on the plate and then I'd have cracked an egg in and done my own egg fried rice and that's kind of where I would have gone but it's not it's not my favorite it's a bit stodgy and stuff like that so what I prefer is where I really love rice where it is perfect for me is is on my holiday when I've been lying on the beach I go in for my lunch cold beer sushi so like a salmon roll or something but that is your rice then is it's refreshing and it's light and it's got that little bit of so that 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 for me is rice at its best bit of bit of sushi do you like uh, wasabi yeah yeah no i'd i'd whack those things on it now i'm getting better with heat i i mean i swear (laughs) do you remember the time we were in uh do you remember the time we were at that fei conference in switzerland and I think I had had to go the day before you. I, mean, I don't know, maybe you team training or something. <laughs> and <laughs> like I, I was there for a day, and Sam was arriving kind of directly from, I suppose directly from Ireland. But basically, we weren't traveling together, which would be unusual. And you had to go directly into the meeting. Again, unusual. You know, normally you'd get to, I suppose, go to the hotel and freshen up. But Sam arrived kind of off the plane and into some big meeting and covered. He had obviously traveled in the clothes that he intended to wear for the meeting. So white shirt and tie covered in, was it soy sauce? Soy sauce, yeah. Yeah, there was literally only... Not like a speck, like, you know, more like coming home like coming home after a heavy Saturday night out, you know, but actually Tuesday, two o'clock in Switzerland with lots of tanned, white, crisp shirted men with velvet shoes. And then Sam literally head to toe in soy sauce (laughs) with that kind of stupid grin that he does. 
I'm a big fan, like from food, you know, I can't be without it. So it, it was one of those journeys that was so action packed. It was um, not action packed. Sorry. It was just so relentless from leaving home to planes to whatever. And just, I booked my ticket, get my, you land in the airport, get your train ticket. And I looked at the platform and I had seven minutes before the train was leaving. I was like, yes, I ran into the supermarket and grabbed some sushi and then put all the soy sauce all over me like it, like you would expect your two-year-old to do when it just started eating <laughs> solid food. Like that's not even an exaggeration. You literally put all of the soy sauce all over I was you. like, how do I open this? Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Where's the room? And um, you know, what got me most was not the fact that I was covered in it, it was the fact that I didn't have enough for my sushi. Yeah. Started trying to wipe my sushi on my shirt, trying to get rid of the soy sauce. <laughs> so you, um, smell, you smell fishy as well. Yeah, it yeah, was, it didn't it was, look it or smell low. very good. Right, team, next one. Revolutionary. This does come in from Ailish. I think I assigned other things to her earlier. This does come in from uh, our friend from the Isle of Man. The one random product that you can't live without. Interest in this. One random mm, product random. that you couldn't live without. Nicole, I mean, you want to take that? Yeah. I So, two things. Firstly, I recently got a microphone that plugs into my phone so I can actually record podcasts off my phone, which is a yeah, game changer. Cool. Um, which, for somebody who normally lugs a massive great big laptop and a microphone around and occasionally has to chase a toddler at the same time, actually having it on my phone and being mobile is really useful. Uh, but I would actually say... For anybody that has small children, and Dean Spike, you can put this on your list of things to say thank you very much in years to come. So Toby has a set. It's like a really, really basic set of reins. Okay. <laughs> and it's not, it, it's not like it's not like those backpacks with like a little lead rope off. It's like a little harness that goes over his shoulders, clips up at the back, and it has like a loop. Now the reins hang are short enough that they don't trip him up. So you can let them hang loose and he'll just run around and doesn't get tripped up by them. Um, mm. But you can grab hold of him it, like quickly and easily. Uh, and the important thing is, you know, when your toddler falls over a lot, anybody with a small mm. kid will realise this, um, actually bending down and hoiking them up off the ground, you know, it doesn't do you back any favours. Whereas this thing, you can literally just grab onto the back of the harness and like lift them clean up pull them up yeah and I... I would say that Toby's little harness is being brilliant it's like five pounds something off Amazon Prime rich out there we go I would be all over that kind of stuff I'll yeah, send you the rich. link rich out thank you uh, Spike what couldn't you live without <clears throat> quite like my new x-ray machine that's a bit boring and a bit vetty isn't it it's quite yeah, revolutionary. You, is it is it revolutionary? People come, here, people come here for the vet talk. I mean, we've learned that. Not a revolutionary, but it's pretty cutting edge, mate. Like it's totally wireless, battery operated, has a sends a picture straight to the laptop. It's pretty cool. Cost a few quid. Pretty penny, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. Cost more than it'll five pounds from Amazon, anyway. It will <laughs> make you more than five pounds from Amazon as well. So it's it's good, good investment. Yeah. Nice toy. Nice to be. Yeah, there. it's pretty cool. quality. What what's it do? So. It's, it just goes directly. You take a picture. So it means I can take x-rays time. at the yard, but it's totally wireless. So you just have a wireless uh, generator. So that's a bit that generates the x-rays that then uh, then they're received by the digital plate, which again is completely wireless and battery operated. And the image pops up on your laptop, which you can have in the corner of the stable or even outside the stable if you have something that's a bit naughty. Oh, so, that sounds incredible. What, where could I avail of this service? How would someone get in contact with you? <laughs> there's plenty of vets that have them in fairness, and it's not like, but it is pretty cool that it's, you know, if we think to what it wasn't even that long ago, how how different getting x rays was. Um, and now it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah, couldn't do what I do without it. But if I was looking to, if I was looking to find you, how would I, how would I do that? <laughs> 
Well, for starters, you could find me on Facebook under Spike Milligan Performance Horse Consultant. Oh, my God. That's it, Spike. That's what we want. That's the only shot. That's why he comes on. So Spike has in his contract with the Eventing Podcast <laughs> that on every the only show payment he's I get. on, <laughs> every show he's on, we have to somehow find a way to say that. So that's that out of the way. Thank you. Contract box tick. <laughs> uh, Sam Watson, what revolutionary item has arrived in your life that you could now not live without? Um, padded cycling shorts. Oh, not are we really gonna? Are we actually gonna go down this route? Yeah, like my arse is in tatters. Um, <laughs> and I have this is, I have, this, is an, have this is an everyday conversation on Echo Ratings meetings at the moment. Literally, this is how Echo Ratings meetings start. I I started cycling last lockdown, like the first lockdown, like about a year ago. And um and and then I, I never recovered from the saddle sores and, and seeing as I live in a saddle um or I work in a saddle, you know, riding, it's 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 just it, it can't it can't recover. So um so yeah, so the kind of duck fatty type lubricant that that gets rubbed on followed by the padded cycling shorts, <laughs> there's some relief of pain, but only so tell me about the duck fat. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that just it's just basically a yeah, it just sort of moistens and makes the whole thing. Is a it bit, a specialist kind of, product or is it? Is it yeah, duck fat? Yeah, it's all, is this it is all for, yeah, it's duck fat based. I think is is kind of. I mean, it's <laughs> this is all the type. This is what it's the a, go it's a low. Uh, but like, there's it's a low moment, then. isn't it? When you just look at yourself on a Monday morning, half yeah. seven in the morning, you're already a year and a bit into lockdown, and you realise you're rubbing duck fat between your legs just to so well, go to work <laughs> yeah and, and, no. and like i used to like a like a real eventer like i used to finish riding the horse and just stay in my job purse because you wouldn't you know you're just too lazy mm. to go out and get change and we're just we just linger around all smelly all day and just leave them on that used to be me now i finished my last horse and i i kind of go you know that that kind of funny walky joggy thing that you do when you're you know, some part of you is uncomfortable and I get into a pair of, and I get all my cycling shorts off and I just get into a pair of normal running shorts with no underwear on to try and get air in to try and heal the thing. <laughs> God, I'm like, okay. and some, so, I mean, if anyone, if any cyclists out there have, you know, can help me, I mean, I have, I have sought professional help and, um, but it's Sam, a I, have two, I, have like... two, I have two thoughts on this. One, oh. I feel so sorry for Sparks, like even more so than I thought I Why, did before. I mean, obviously, I can't live without her. And I mean, I mean and also, do you, do you ever see your children like between riding and then the cycling and then the equiratings and the? Well, I'm not. I mean, the thing is, I'm not cycling. I mean, I've stopped cycling. Um, it's just this is just legacy this is just left over from last year like i've had to start running i couldn't physically run this time last year like i can as dear well knows i i can run 15k now consecutively i couldn't run for five minutes without thinking that i my heart was defibrillating or something hmm. um i don't think but that's that, the word I, but um myself and sam running is actually laura i think laura brought up running as part of the or alphabetics Running has gotten quite competitive in between us at the moment, hasn't it? Well, like I'm, I'm just going along, doing my bit, building my aerobic base as You're I've not. been instructed to do. You're and not. I am. Tell, I have okay, not gone out. I, my heart rate's not gone over eighty percent. Well, like the odd time it. Have you in, like, not at any point in the last week thought? I'm just gonna like. Why did you do 15k yesterday? Is a question I have for you on saturday it's that was my second long run i'd done 15k two weeks beforehand that's my that's my weekend long run i couldn't do okay, it okay well then i tried to do, i set off to do 15k last weekend and couldn't because it was just horizontal rain so i i did I, you just end up in the middle of ireland then like if you intended to do 15 <laughs> no. did you just, sort just of end up somewhere <laughs> Here bring I up am. sparks and go um sorry it's happened again you'll have, you'll, you'll have to get me <laughs> <laughs> Lot i of planned it well it was a good that's a good point actually because i was going i had had a thought that sparks could drop me somewhere that was 15k away and i could do a different <laughs> and then that would have been a bad plan at least this i was able to plan go no there's no way i'm doing so i'd be five five out and five back 
rather than um, seven and a half. Good job, I'm a mathematician. Imagine if I couldn't divide by two. <laughs> um, one one uh, one word answers. This is from Sari as well, actually. One word answers. Then, if I just go around here, um, Roger Federer, or Roger Federer, or Rafael Nadal, pick a side: Nadal or Federer. Sam, Roger for me. Roger. Spike. Roger. Nicole. Um. I know Lissa Green, if she listens to the show, will will hate us all and never be friends again because she is a big Rafael Nadal fan. But I will say Roger Federer is a goat. But I, I'm I'm I prefer Nadal. Do you? I do, yeah. I mean they're I mean, both. They're, Dear they're would be different. a sucker for a sweaty hair and big biceps. And that, <laughs> big biceps. And, hand. <laughs> big bicep, and he's Spanish as well. He's the key thing. He just has one big bicep. He likes um, his Spanish as well. You speak it, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Laura. This you is can have a glass of Albarino one. with him. I like this. This is an interesting one from Laura. Recommendation: Recommend one thing for another person to try. Could be a TV show, food, or anything. Okay, if you could recommend, um, if you could recommend something. So, yeah, whatever: food, TV, music, a book. What would you recommend, Spike the Vet? Ooh, what would I recommend? I would, ha, I would recommend that from a, okay, we'll go with food then. I recommend that people eat more British sourced meat <laughs> and game as well. I had some lovely partridge fillet curry this evening. Yeah, more locally produced, locally sourced British food. <laughs> I know that you are trolling me, and I am not going to take the bait. But not then more. Then you don't need Irish. to eat more. People are eating plenty of it. You know what I mean? Keep. But think about no, where no, you're what, buying. He mean, what he means is be more local. Yeah. So less, you know, sub out some. No, he didn't say that. He Brazilian said Brazilian and eat bring more in. meat. That's what he said. We, so if you don't need to do if you live in the US and you have a local farm shop, then go to your local farm shop. If you live in Ireland, get your meat from a farmer down the road, like those kinds of things. Or thanks, Nicole. I have got a recommendation. It's not about anything sort of tangible as such, right. but it is really nice to be nice. So if next time you that you think, oh, somebody looks nice or they've done something nice with their hair or they did a really good job on something or they just look like they need a pat on the back, be nice to somebody because a compliment mm. or a word of encouragement costs nothing and actually might make the world of difference. So go out of your way to be nice to other people. Do you remember last week when you came on the show and you looked a million dollars? And yeah, told and you, you told that. me I look nice. And, and I you pre- were you you said like, oh, that must mean I look horrible all the rest of the time. And then I where do you go <laughs> from there? <laughs> but that was yeah, probably so accept a compliment. Very good at taking a compliment. Um so accept a compliment as well. If somebody says something, be you know, but I that made me feel better. I was like, oh, thanks very much. If you have, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if Sam was on the show when we did all the inspirational quotes. That was a recent one as well. Oh, that was the Q alphabet. That was that the that was the last alphabet, wasn't it? Are you, are we're doing two quite close together. Q does come before R, in fairness. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a good one. Um, Sam, anything from you? Um, Audible is a good. Um, you got me oh, onto yeah. Audible, pal. You you actually told me to do that. You got me the way you got me there was on the subscription thing, going you you get a token a month and you can buy books for twenty five quid for only seven quid or whatever the monthly subscription is what i would say is audible or no audible uh tribe of mentors tim ferris is very good uh you can just put it on that there are i mean it is literally a tribe of mentors he asks them all so it's all like it's like a book of short stories but just short kind of people from i must say I, i find tim a bit frustrating these days he talks an awful lot uh yeah well he doesn't talk on this he only asks the question of other people so Mm. um so you you might find it bearable but it's 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 one of those ones that you can listen when you're not always concentrating so if you're sort of multi if you're running or something and then the odd line just flies in and you're like oh that's that makes a lot of sense um so it's interesting a lot of different people from a different different audible yeah 
I would second that. Second that audible. Um, but tri- tribe of mentors for me is a good starting point. Very good. Uh, okay, I've got some quick ones for you. Um, I don't know how long this show is going to go on, but I mean, I'm, I'm having a great time. Uh, okay, so Deborah has asked. So this is just a yes or no answer. It's a yes from me, Deborah. Rum and raisin ice cream, Sam. Oh yeah, I wouldn't say no to any type of ice cream. Spice. <laughs> I'm going to go with a no. And isn't it weird that rum and raisin was one of like the original, like whoever put rum and raisin together? Like oh, it's one of the original sort of like old school ice creams. Mm. Anyway, it's a no for me. Very unlike you. Mm, I would fart there are far superior flavours of ice cream to rum and raisin. Okay. Um, roses. What's your favourite flavour of roses then? Nicole, I'll start with you. It's in the chocolates. Yeah, unless you're eating. No, no, we (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, Okay, I would say the strawberry one. Is it the strawberry barrel? I like Mm. strawberry chocolate, yeah. Yeah, strawberry heart, isn't it, I think? Don't know. The strawberry one, anyway. Spike? Roses? I I don't think I've ever judged you more, Nicole. Um, The purple one. It's always the purple one, surely. Yeah, is that the one with the nut in it? That's the hazelnut yeah, caramel. One, yeah. yeah, caramel nut. Yeah, it's probably the correct answer. But Sam, roses? No, the long gold one. The oh, finger, rotten. really? <laughs> oh. I always thought you preferred the silver one, Sam. <laughs> oh, What's God. the silver? I don't even. <laughs> I think he was trying to be funny, but I didn't get the joke either. Okay. Um, rose or Cote de Rhone? I don't even know what the second one is. And I didn't know oh, what the rice on, thing the rice vibe. thing was that you said was the right answer. What what is that? I didn't know what that rice thing was. Or the Cotaron. Cotaron is a is a big full bodied French red. You've bought boxes of the stuff <laughs> previously. Uh okay. Well I'll I'll skip over that for the I mean Spike, you're you're you like your Sparks loves a like sparkling rose. I'm sorry to butt in. So that would be her. Denise is a big fan of rosé as well. I, I must say I like it. I could drink it. Oh, yeah. Nicole, rosé? Yes, no? Yes and yes. Like them both. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes and yes. With a few rose Anyone. petals thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, Tell exactly. you what, in July, when life is going back to normal again, a cold rosé in the sun... Yeah. At Barbary. They're, yes, they're for different times of the year, I find. Agreed. Like a cold rosé in the summer, a warming red wine in the winter. Yeah, mm. that's it. And, um, and a red wine, you know, when you've been outside all day and you come back in and the fire's on, your face like burns up because you've been really cold and the weather's been wild. Yeah. And then you have a glass of red and your body warms up from the inside as well. It's just delightful. Yeah, I actually... Not alcoholic I, drinks are available. I I'm, like sure Ol's, I'm sure Ol's giving you slow gin and pretending it's <laughs> red wine. <laughs> I like when winter comes. Like I'm, I like now that like we're moving out of winter and like we're getting closer to rosé time. But I like kind of when you've had a good, a good long summer, and then slowly the evenings get shorter and you get to like drink red wine and be cold for a while. Yeah, I agree with you. Actually, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that's over. We're lucky, aren't we? Here with the, with the. I like get the some level of hot and some level of cold. I like the seasons, yeah. Mm. Uh, coming to the end of this, uh, road trips, anyone been on any good ones from Alex? I take that as a uh, no. no. No good road trips? I, no, I love my road trips. My, my favourite, I the love my road trips going off to the sort of the European youth champs. So travelling with the horses, following them. Like my first championship I did, we went to Monte Libretti. That was a three day trip. That was a good giggle. That was great fun. Um, traveling with the grooms and the guys from, from Parkers who do all the transporting. That was a good road trip. Three days. Down oh, how many Libretti. plugs can you get in? A transport I company. It's I travel the with the grooms, the hardest yeah. workers, youth championships. <laughs> Again. Christ, I, honestly, he it's just a road trip, mate. Birds, <laughs> booze. Yes. Come on. No, don't do any of that. Uh, we have, I have fun road trips to, um, if I can, like to Buccalo or Le Moulin and stuff like that. So I would, uh, I usually stop at Collets and um, 
then we go on convoy and just yeah have have um walkie talkies sometimes which is good it's good fun really yeah talking completely do you have a particular nonsense. name on your walkie talkie like um, a nickname i i have i've i have been um become known as the pigeon for some reason it's cuz i when when I was based with Laura, I used to do pigeon impressions. I used to speak to the pigeons in a pigeon voice. I don't think we need to go into that though, really, on the podcast. It could I don't sort of, know. I don't really? know anything about it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. You know, there's a period of your life that I don't know about, really, isn't there? That whole few years, there's a few blanks for me. Yeah, like that's yeah. When you never came to a single event until you started dating a pent rider, then you were there at. Combined trainings, holding horses in February in the freezing cold. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? That's romantic. Yeah, yeah. I went all in. Right I went all in. Yeah, I would say that would be a fair and accurate reflection of my life. Rihanna or Rod Stewart? And this is stuck on in your car forever. You can only pick one or the other. Sam. Oh, Rihanna, hands down. Oh, surprise. Under my Spike. umbrella. Yeah, but Maggie May. Yeah, Rod Stewart. Yeah, it's the only answer. I don't think I know any Rod Stewart songs. Me and Nicole. Road yeah. trip to Rihanna. We'll go on road trips. Like, Listening to one like... song on repeat. Rioca, yeah, exactly. road trip, Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Mm, I, I like this one from Alex's. Go on, sorry. Top tip for anybody who is on a long road trip and needs to pass the time. This I might get shot down on this for a second, but um, you know, if you, a good game of Shag Murray or Kill always passes the time. What what game is that, Nicole? How does that what, work? Uh, what's the, Shag Murray or Kill? No, no I, I mean I I agree with you that it's a great game, but what's the context of this? What road are you trips. Oh. I went back to road trips. Yeah. Sorry, on a road trip. On a road yes. trip, no, I'm not just going to shag, marry, and kill people. But on a road trip, that I, game, your we have on- we have myself and yourself have passed hours. Yes, we have. People. Yeah. yeah, I don't like I'm, to objectify people. Like <laughs> I have no problem with that. No, we, we <laughs> really enjoy it. <laughs> um, um, anyway, so next time we're on a run, long road trip, listeners, give it a go. <laughs> the game. I'll give you uh, listeners, actually. Here's one for you guys to play along with at home. Jack if you're the Ripper. Now. The next um, Jack no, no, the Ripper no, no. took his advice from Nicole. <laughs> I was on a road trip. I just started shagging people, <laughs> marrying them and killing them. Uh, Nicole <laughs> told me to do it, Your Honour. <laughs> no, no, this no, is no, this no. podcast. <laughs> I was just going to say, anybody that is playing along at home right now and you're listening to this show, then just take a moment. Spike, yeah. Sam, Dumb. Make your decision. You don't have to tell us. Just play along at home. We have to. I will tell you. Um, okay, just before you make your minds up, I was going to add a couple of things. <laughs> in. Dan's going to so, say, "I'll everybody." This is literally, you. literally the low so, point. This is like jumping I can, a shark. I can cook. I'm a. I'm a good cook. <laughs> I'm also a great listener, and I would say a lot of you out there will be thinking Spike, obviously for husband material, but. Don't rule me out. I actually am <laughs> I just saying that I've I've got a lot of great traits. So think about it. Um yeah. Look, that's I'll leave it with you guys. It's up to you in the end. Ultimately it's your own choice. Okay. Um Rodeo. Which event rider would be the best rodeo rider? This also comes in from Alex. This is just a one word answer or a one name answer. We're coming to the end of the show now. So, Rodeo, anybody? Which event rider would be the best I, Rodeo rider? I have a trophy. You do? The yeah. Mechanical bull. I tell you who, though. Um, Alex Watien, I think, does long legs and uh, to wrap him wrap around the bull. And then he's so kind of bendy. And, like, you wouldn't want a top-heavy person or you wouldn't want someone with short legs. So little Tommy McEwen would be really determined. He'd hang on for ages. Like his legs would be flying around in the air and he'd still be there holding on. But eventually his hands are just going to give way. So mm. you need long pair of legs, kind of light on top. Alex, what's the end for me? Jesse Campbell? Uh, yeah, that New Zealand. I think Jock Paget as well. I think he was, 
Mind you, we did this at Barbary. I don't think he was, I think he was the kind of bookie's favourite. I don't think he did that well. I'll go with Jesse. Nicole? I was going to say um, Laura Colick. She always sticks some pretty good acrobatics. But actually, on saying they need to be a bit taller, Laura's very tiny. So I'm going to say Tim Price. Okay. He falls off a lot, though, in fairness to me. Yeah, that's a mad <laughs> answer. He falls off on the flat, Nicole. <laughs> Doesn't that. even need a fence. He just Not even a sees, a, he sees a pool of water. On, head first. <laughs> oh, look, it's a corner. I have to go around it. Down. <laughs> <laughs> we're only joking we love him he's champ he's number two in the world um okay spike His wife would be a pretty good contender in fairness i'd love to see this would be good this is what we should have done we could do i'd love to see laura versus janelle laura quietly competitive janelle very openly competitive mm. that'd be good spike have you got anyone for the rodeo section so the only rodeo riders i've ever known were all farriers when I worked in Australia. So on that basis, I'll go with Alex Bragg. Oh, yeah. He'd do it topless. <laughs> that would be a sight. Oh, my God, wouldn't that be a sight? Do you remember when he did that thing topless just one random day last year? Like it, yeah, it motivation. motivation. Yeah, it was a motivational speech, wasn't it? He was just like a He was Tuesday, on his exercise bike. Just like a Tuesday morning in April or something. Like there was no kind Do you think he has padded shorts, oh. Sam? <laughs> On his exercise bike. Do you I'd think he needs he, his duck, duck fat or whatever it was that you were doing? He's the so. Iron Man. And, and, and I have to say, I Alex, if you're listening to this, which you're probably not, but do, do like, it. I think that's great. You need, this is what, like, you need personalities in sport and he's brilliant. He is brilliant. So, a lot yeah, of people thought it was great, Sam. To be we fair. all thought yeah, it was great. It was like, absolutely no Exploded. But by the way, he, what exploded? <laughs> you know the group that you never go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you tricked no, no, Nicole no. there. You tricked Nicole. No, um, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with you, Sam. I think he is a ray of sunshine. And actually, this is bringing me to the final, possibly the final question. Uh, Ailish again, very good contributor. I'm actually going to give Ailish the Mr. Emily B. Award this week. She is a friend of the show. I don't know that we have any prizes for the Mr. Emily B Award, but it's a pretty prestigious thing to win anyway because there's not many of them that get given out. But I'm going to give it to Ailish this week. She's made some great contributions. So coming to the end then, Ray of Sunshine. I've excluded children and family from this. Um, who brightens up even the blackest of days in your life? And I, I suppose it doesn't have to be... Uh, doesn't have to be a human. I suppose it could be a horse or a dog, but like, you know... Make it interesting. Um, Sam, I'll start with you. Uh, mine is a person, and I, I don't get to see them that often, but I'm just so happy when I see them. And I suppose this is one for maybe the uh, bit rude to say older generations, but Sneezy Foster. So she's was Captain David Foster's wife, good friend of ours, Jessie Foster, her mum. Mm-hmm. She's just the greatest person i know she puts she runs the david foster ball every year for ireland which is our kind of injured jockeys fund uh, or injured riders fund mm. but um so she's kind of contributing to sport that way but she she's just so positive and brilliant and yeah uh, she's always so positive I yeah i would have said that as something very very good shout nicole brown what is the uh, ray of sunshine that comes into your life mm. on the dark days Outside of immediate, like, Ol and Toby, obviously, I would say my dog, because Bertie Brown just looks at you with love in his eyes. So My I wife would say, would say that about her dog, in fairness. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, when they just look at you, I think my quote on the cue thing was, be the person that your dog thinks you are. And Bertie is that reason, because he just, oh, he just looks at you and you are the the world to him. And mm. like he just w- good day, bad day, oh. no matter what happens, the dog, you know. But anyway, I was actually going to say my mum because um, always honest. A bit close to home, isn't it? I I think they're on the not allowed fun. list. It's a little harsh not to consider yeah. a family either, isn't it? Yeah, I mean she's one. <laughs> Sorry, mom, I mean I'm sure she's going to be a little anyway. bit disappointed. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. In that case, then I would say. Um, 
I have a very, very, very good friend. Tom from my... next door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you joke, actually. Her husband's called Tom. They used to live next door. Uh, it's actually a very good friend of mine called Jo. She's a vet, which is very useful. Um, and she's my parenting guru. And she will drink lots and lots of Prosecco with me. And she's brilliant. So it would always be that friend that you text when you need something. Unless what you need is a wireless x-ray machine in which case don't text Joe I text the other vet yeah absolutely go on Facebook and type in Spike Milligan Performance Consultant exactly for the contract exactly. thank you um, okay well done Joe it is um, Spike Milligan final answer of the evening to end another well you incredible... got a good answer okay you can come back to me I do, we'll, we'll, we'll give what Spike has to, we'll give Spike, to Spike the final answer <laughs> The... So I think you need someone that it has a very similar sense of humor uh, to you. And I would go with someone that always really good at picking me up or just helping me through some rough times would be a bit of a friend of a show and a friend of all of us is um, Alice Dorman, uh, otherwise Panda. known as Panda Sue. And... Mm-hmm. I will always remember with great fondness having an amazing skiing holiday with her when I was probably at one of my lowest ebbs. Um, she persuaded me that we just needed to go and have three days skiing. And I basically laughed consistently and solidly for three days and was drunk solidly for about three days as well. And mm. she's just someone that will always pick up the phone and is, yeah, brilliant. Great person. Great show, Chip. I agree with that. Yeah, I need. I I'd like to convince her to move to Ireland, and um, then I take out my training license. She could be my. She could be your assistant partner. Well, I don't know if you could call Alice that. I think I'd probably end up being her assistant. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's it. That's the end. Um, there's no, what about yours? Who's, would... What's your person that brings sunshine in my life? I don't know if, if I'm honest. Sparks would be high up. Um. You know, we spend some time living together. Oh. It's probably five or six or maybe eight or nine years ago now. But um, <clears throat> always well, positive, always smiling. I married your wife. When... So <laughs> <laughs> she's essentially immune to badness, is Sparks. Like she just, everything yeah. just bounces off her. She's just, yeah. Yeah. It's a good She's no, married I mean, to me. I, to be honest, I think that is the worst thing you could ever think because actually, no one is immune to badness what she just has is an incredible ability to uh you know to deal with it all herself and then continually add positivity into everybody else's life because i mean that because nobody's immune to it but she is just so uh she's strong and she smiles her way through everything and then you know looks after you so i would say sparks brings great um you know i text her I text her very like text her every day and yeah she she's just a great she's a soulmate to me this is just okay. what else <laughs> so, I mean I <laughs> that's, just, that's just trolling Sam it's so, it's Sam so difficult to yeah how do you deal with that you know when you I, you yeah. know I couldn't I couldn't give but yeah and your your friend takes your wife no god almighty um, God, well, what we a lovely way uh, to finish yeah we can't finish I mean, an alphabeti <laughs> with, like me and sparks running <laughs> off into the into the distance um okay let's finish then with um let's finish with something a little bit lighter than running that, away than adultery i suppose between you know the end of echo ratings the end of a great friendship sam let's oh this is a great one from susan uh retro Precisely what year were you coolest in and why? <laughs> I mean, I'll start. Uh, there is no year. No, come on. You you mean you have had. When were you coolest? I mean, it I couldn't mean, like, be school. Or, you, I mean, it's not. It's, I mean, you came home. I know we referenced it, but like you came home to a packed airport with a medal. That was pretty cool time. It's only a few years ago, but I mean, that was that was cool. I mean, you're not conventionally cool. I'll give you that, but like you were also like star of all the 
you know, of all the drama society in school, you were like, no, well, that's not good, is it? I mean, you can't. That's that's the that's the antonym. I don't know. It was pretty cool. Like you were, you were in the choir. You were one of the best <laughs> singers in the school. I know what you're saying. doing now. You've done. You're doing this again. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just saying you uh, you have had some cool years, and you can pick any of them. Don't yeah, pick any well, you want. I'm going to take the time when I came back to the airport and. Half of Ireland was there because that was medal. cool. That was cool. I give you that. Spike, precisely what year? I need the year in which you were coolest. It was. That you know, was twenty eighteen, by the way. Try on twenty eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Forty years to the day after his father won in Kentucky. Um, Spike, was it? You know, I don't think. I mean, you can give your own answer here, but I doubt it was like the university drinking on a stage. With no top on stuff like I'd say it was later, was it? You're cool. You're cool. Mm, slightly struggling here, G. Um I would say putting it out there would be I was probably at my coolest when I was eighteen in my gap year, I think. <laughs> Tell us more. Um well, how did Australia. you how did you wear your hair? What state was your hair in? Long. Right. Yeah, How long? Blonde. Did it have sun in yeah, it? Yeah, quite long. Blonde. Like Sam blonde. Yeah, my hair goes really blonde in the sun. So I worked in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales when I left school. And I was distinctly uncool when I left school. I think it's probably because it was probably the biggest shift in coolness, if I even, whether mm. I would consider I was ever actually cool. Uh, but yeah, no, I grew up back. a lot. Like if you, if you start off a bit uncool in school, like you're not allowed to change. It's too, no. you can't. You have to. So when people you break like Derm away, then are there. You break it back. <laughs> people yeah. like Derm are there, keeping you in your place. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, um, yeah, I totally agree. Like, yeah, you're either you're either cool at school or you're not. And I, you know, I wanted to be a vet, so I had to like work hard and everything like that, which automatically makes you a little bit uncool, doesn't it? When you're like a bit geeky. So, I uh, yeah, I forged my own little path for six months in Australia, and yeah, it was it was good times and. I grew up a lot and became a bit worldly wise and yeah, it was good times. Great place. Uh, the Hunter Valley is an amazing, beautiful, great area. Uh, Very fertile. Did you have your first flock of children out there, would you say? Yeah, I had about <laughs> seven. <laughs> God, <I'm crazy. laughs> uh, Nicole, were you, uh, was, there a, was there a particular year? of? I'm coolness? still waiting. I'm still waiting right, for you've my had cool some years. years. You've had some I know. Years. I would. I would have not been at all cool at school. You're an like, influencer, Nicole Brown. I'm You're an influencer. Sure. Now. You drink cocktails I, in London. I'm very so like very awkward inside though most of the time. I know. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be cool. I think I. I get cooler as I'm older because I give less what's it about anything else and i think if you're yeah, happy you're cool. then um <laughs> give less what's it yeah. <laughs> give less what's it now um, um, no, but i think if you don't care about like what people think then mm, you're more like yeah nicole yeah. you're pretty cool you're a social influencer you've got like yeah. sponsored like yeah clothing companies and stuff available. you have you do all this stuff on like Instagram, you have great Mondays. I mean, like you're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. My Mondays are epic. I'll be honest. Yeah, Monday mornings um, in particular. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, no, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm getting cooler as I get older. I reckon. Twenty twenty one is the year. Yes, it'll be the year. I don't know the year for what, but it'll be the year for something. Well, the year of release, the year of endless alphabetic. <laughs> so Child what we're number thinking two. of doing? What we're thinking of doing is we're thinking of ending the eventing podcast preview review section and just coming on to do alphabetics from now on for the certainly so thinking of that i look if there's enough backing for it which i think there would be i think that's what we should do how because there's i mean look there's always outliers isn't there so how how do we shut down alphabetic nobody wants stop that, it though. People love suppose, it, but then they love other stuff as well. So if there was another version of it, Sam, like if you could do another version of it, I mean, you could change it. But I, I think people need a release from uh, from all the kind of you know preview review stuff. Horse heroes. Let's talk about old horses. 
good content, you know. Hall of Fame. Um, Let's ask you all about your career. Anyway, don't you be dissing some of my favorite (laughs) shows here. (laughs) I mean, a lot of the heartache goes into those. (laughs) A lot of hours of hard labor. Darren, for you, is it the wrestling phase? I mean, the hardest thing, unfortunately, with the wrestling phase would be to specify a particular year, Sam, as you're aware. <laughs> it's stretched over. Did you, you know. did you personally wrestle or did you just did, like I mean, watching wrestling? I wrestled my little sister four years younger than me, getting her in the walls of Jericho and doing the people's elbow on her. And yeah. No, yeah, no, Ivan, uh, Ivan was always a prop in my wrestling or a goalie, that kind of thing. Anyway, she's grown into a wonderful person. Great friend now. Uh, so yeah, no, the wrestling phase was particularly uncool. I definitely thought I was quite cool at the time. I've had multiple years, I think. As you're aware, Sam, I wore white tracks and bottoms. You know, I used to, the M&M stage, I dyed M&M, my hair. Yeah. Like, I dyed my hair like M&M. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I... I mean, there, 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 there couldn't be anything more... There couldn't be anything less cool than the people who really think they're cool. And I definitely have had a few years of that, I can tell you. I've grown out of it. I looked at myself today, um, just this evening, and I was in the kitchen. Ah, the boldness, I can't really see because it's at the top of my head. So, like, you can see that. I mean, it's creeping back as well. No, uh, no, 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 that's not too bad. Honestly, I have a good head of hair at the... I mean, it's but, long, but it's it's. No, the piece actually that shocked me was um, I was in the kitchen and um, I just caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I had a SAP white polo shirt, t-shirt on, and it was tucked in to my jeans, and I was wearing kind of big white runners, and I just there was a moment where I realized I'd become that guy, Something you know. Like, just you know polo shirt buttoned up to the top jeans up pretty high big loopy runners you know you just realize you're middle-aged anyway lovely daughter and wife though yeah yeah i suppose i'm happily middle-aged definitely not cool i mean we were meant to be finishing on a lighter note but the midlife crisis has started folks and this podcast is ending (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay that's another episode of alphabetty spaghetti the best show we have don't worry it's not coming to an end how we don't have too much left in the alphabet this time oh, around. are we just going to restart it again though go I back to letter it. a oh, we'll yeah, wait and see i think we'll it's wait and done see i think it's you know it's like faulty towers or the office where it's just, <gasps> it was this one one thing that happened 26 times oh my god really yeah, I, I think so, yeah. It'll always be remembered fondly then. Because I think if kind of like this podcast, it just drags on and on and on, then <laughs> people I'll will... Come, will... Um, I'll, I'll come back on for W. Okay. Watson. We what? can discuss the great okay. Watsons and that will be, that'll right. be it for me. I don't know. Like no one your wants dad to wrote a book. Your, remember your dad's book launch? Yeah. God, he like didn't write it. Well, well, we'll talk about it in that. the hard on the W pod. That is That's on all to, w. to come. That's all to come. Thank you for tuning in. And I expect for not staying this long for, um, <laughs> I expect we're just talking to ourselves now. Another episode of, <laughs> another episode of Or, another episode, another episode of Alphabet Spaghetti, I should say, the letter Or. Thanks for joining us. And we will be back with real podcasts and actually some quite good ones very soon. <laughs>